how do we differentiate between intuitive thought and intrusive thought? So here's the thing. Intrusive thought is usually fear-based, which means it's generally an egoic thought. Now, our ego is designed to keep us safe. The one question that ego asks when it's confronted with something in front of us or something new is, is this going to kill me or am I going to live? And if it doesn't know, it will think it's going to kill you. So the fear starts to come in, which creates those intrusive thoughts. If it's fear-based, it's intrusive. If it's not fear-based, because everything from spirit is based on love and every message that you get is there to serve you to your highest purpose. I hope that helps. Fear versus intuition. So the easiest way to determine this is first to understand anxiety. And anxiety is simple. It's basically when our conscious mind projects make-believe stories into the future that our subconscious mind believes to be real, causing the anxiety and the anxious sensations that come up inside your body. Intuition is simply when we bring awareness to something, okay? And the easiest way to determine this is simply place your hand on your heart, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and ask yourself the question, is this causing me fear or anxiety? And if the answer is yes, then it's just anxiety. It's not intuition. Simple as that. I'm Ali, and if you don't already know, I'm an intuitive and a psychic medium. I've been getting so many questions from people asking how do they start to tap into their own intuition. First, I just want to say we all have intuition. We just haven't been taught how to use it. Every single one of us has the complete capability of being fully tapped in intuitively to their higher self, to source energy, and to the universe. I know people use different words, so when I say source energy, it could mean God, light, whatever word resonates with you. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few basic ways to start tapping into your intuition. The first way is through colors. Write down a list of colors that you like and a list of colors that you don't like. The colors that you like will be your yes colors and the colors that you don't like will be your no colors. From there, start to ask simple questions, but turn them into statements. So instead of saying, is it in my highest good? Say, it is in my highest good. For example, close your eyes and say the statement, it is in my highest good to get coffee today. Open your eyes and whatever color you see first is your answer. If it's one of your yes colors, it's a yes. If it's one of your no colors, it's a no. Stay tuned for part two. How to tap into your intuition. As you saw in part one, I talked about using colors to determine yes and no answers. And I wanted to share more, so here's part two. This intuitive practice will activate the feelings you get in your body. Think about the feeling in your body that you feel when you get really excited. Or the feeling in your body you feel when something good happens to you. Where do you feel that feeling? It could be a light feeling in your chest. It could be your eyes getting teary or even a light feeling in your solar plexus, which is right in between your ribcage. For me personally, a yes feeling in my body is my eyes getting teary. Whatever that light, happy, airy feeling is in your body, that is your intuitive yes. Now think about how you feel when something doesn't feel good to you. Maybe you're touring a new house or apartment and you just know it's not the one. Or maybe you felt like this about a person. Pay attention to where you feel that in your body. For me personally, it feels like a heavy feeling in my stomach like someone punched me. That is your body's intuitive no feeling. Stay tuned for part three. Hey y'all, I'm Allie and I'm an intuitive and a psychic medium. As I said in part one and part two, a lot of y'all have been asking me so many questions about how to start tapping into your own intuition. So here is part three on how you can get clear, channeled, intuitive answers for yourself. In part one, we talked about colors and in part two, we talked about feelings in our body. Now we're gonna take it up a level. I'm gonna teach you how to do basic intuitive blind reads on yourself so you don't manipulate the outcome of the answer. Okay, so you're gonna get a piece of paper and you're gonna rip up the piece of paper. On each ripped piece of paper, you're going to write a question you would like to know the outcome of. Then you're going to fold the papers and mix them all up. Once the papers are folded, pick which piece of paper you feel called to do the read on first. Hold it in your hand and set the intention that that's the question you will be answering. The read I'm about to show you how to do is called an animal read. You're going to set the intent to see an animal through your mind's eye. Describe where the animal is, what the animal's doing, and how it's feeling. Describe anything and everything you see around the animal. Then from there, interpret what each thing you saw meant. This is a fun way for beginners to tap into your clairvoyance. Stay tuned for part four. So here's part four of this intuitive training series. What I'm about to teach you can be used for basic decision-making in your day-to-day -day life 
or it can be used for bigger decisions. Okay, so you're going to write the word yes on one piece of paper, get another piece of paper, and then you're gonna write the word no. Fold them up and mix them around so you don't know which one is which. This technique is used to ensure that you're not emotionally manipulating your own answers. So if you're feeling a little bit emotional about something and can't decide if it's your ego or your intuition, this is the good technique to use. Once you have yes and no written down on several pieces of paper and have mixed them up, go ahead and ask your question. If you can, turn the question into a statement. You can ask things like, it is in my highest good to go on this date tonight with this person. Or it is in my highest good to start this project. Or anything from, it is in my highest good to spend money on this. Or it is in my highest good to take this job. Literally, you can ask any yes or no question. Intend for a clear, definite answer from source. Pick up a paper and boom, there's your answer. Here's how you can begin to start trusting your intuitive and psychic gifts. And if you don't already know, I'm an intuitive and a psychic medium, so I got you. The first thing is paying attention. So when you have that gut intuitive feeling and you do what it's telling you to do, pay attention to how that works out for you. And then also pay attention to what happens when you go against your gut, your intuitive, that first instinct feeling. You're going to start to prove to yourself how your first instinct, your first intuitive feeling is always correct. That's going to lead you to start trusting it more. Then start to pay attention to all the times that you think something and then somebody else says it out loud. It's no coincidence that you were thinking it and they said it out loud, you were actually reading their mind. The more that happens, the more you will prove over and over to yourself that you really aren't thinking your own thoughts a lot of the time. Practice intuition games with your friends. You can play simple games by using colors or numbers. For example, have them hold a specific color in their head and have them think it over and over and over. And then see if you can tap into their brain telepathically and see what color that they are thinking of. Our intuition is like a muscle. It's the same thing as going to the gym. The more you work out, the more athletic you become. The more you practice your intuition, the better it gets. Stranger. Hey universe, how do I follow my intuition? Following your intuition is as natural as breathing. The thing is, so many of us are living lives that go against our very nature, which makes it difficult for us to notice when intuition shows up. So how do we return to our true nature? As much as you possibly can, stop planning. A bird doesn't know where its next meal is coming from, and yet it always finds it. Your only job is to focus on the next step, not the next 20 steps. The universe is constantly showing you where your next meal is coming from, but you will never notice when you've made the future more important than the present. Living in the now is what is most natural to us. From there, you will always know what to do. What is setting intentions? How does it work? Intentions programming. I'm sure you've heard it before. Well, how do you do it? Well, I'm here to explain this to you on a deeper level to help you better understand it. All of that stuff is all in the same thing. What you're doing is working with energy. Your energy and the universal energy around you to create your reality and to align with the vibrational frequencies that you're speaking into existence, into an object or whatever that would be. And if you don't know what vibrational frequencies are, I highly suggest that you look into it because it will help you when you're setting these intentions and programming things to really make it very, very strong. People have intentions all the time. Somebody might have the intention to hurt you and you're gonna feel that with them and it's gonna probably upset you. People might have the intention to make you happy and you'll be able to feel that. There's and also make sure that you know what your crystal healing properties already are. Because if one is for like ancient wisdom and knowledge, you're not gonna be wanting to put an intention for manifesting whatever into a crystal. In my next TikTok, I'm going to demonstrate how to actually do this. So come follow along if you want. You have bad energy being directed towards you, psychic attack, ill will from other people, and you wanna know how to stop it, right? Hi, I'm Christy Treaty, I'm a psychic and soul guide, and I'm here to teach others how to embrace and harness their psychic superpowers. So make sure you follow me for more psychic development, hints and tips. Now back to business. How do we stop psychic attack? First of all, you need to know you can't actually stop it being directed towards you. That is completely outside your control. But what you do have control of are your energetic boundaries. The daily psychic hygiene is the way to go. Now, if you stay through to the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to do all three to make sure that your energetic boundaries are fully solid and you can release anything that is not yours. This is also one for the empaths, us that feel others' energies and emotions 
to the extreme and can often feel very drained. Now, I may offend some people with this, but I'm an, I am a reformed empath and the reason we do this is because we actually lack, we have really shitty energetic boundaries. This one is for you. Psychic hygiene is grounding, clearing and shielding your energy. The quickest way to ground your energy and for the sake of this video is simply placing your hand on your head. Now remembering if you only have intention, intention is all you ever need. There is so much power in intention. So hand on your head, feel your feet firmly on the ground and say, I declare this body grounded to the earth right now. And so it is. Secondly, to clear your energy, imagine a magnet channeling straight through the middle of you, taking a really deep breath in and say, I call all of my energy home to me in this moment and feel that magnet zap all of your energy back inside of you. On the next exhale, say, I release all that is not mine and all that no longer serves me back to wherever it came from. I send it back with love and compassion. Feel the release. And then we have cloaking. So just imagine a big blue, navy blue wizard's cloak, putting it on, doing it up, placing the big hood over the top of you, protecting you. And imagine that that is your energetic boundary and say, this energetic space is now mine. Nothing shall penetrate unless I give it permission. Now you can relax in your own space, feel the calmness. I do this on a daily basis. Every morning when I get up, I roll onto the side of the bed, I place my feet on the ground and I do this psychic hygiene. I also do it just before I go to sleep each night. And then when I'm doing my readings, I often do it in between each reading. Now, if you have any questions, by all means, hit me up in the comments. You're powerful. Do you want to develop your intuition? Here's my story on how I developed my intuition. Years ago, I took hypnotherapy training, not for the intention of developing my intuition, but for the intention of healing and uh, processing and releasing the fear that was stored in my mind and body as a result of my past. I ended up learning how to do a lot of inner healing work on myself. And what I found was as I was releasing the fear and healing, my intuition was increasing and I was seeing uh, visuals all the time in my third eye. I was having more experiences with like entities, but um, because I was able to manage and process and be mindful of my emotions, I was also able to control my intuition, if that makes sense. The healing wasn't an overnight thing, it was a process. And the other thing I also noticed was I was more aware of the energies I was picking up from people. So I was also able to protect myself and release the energies that did not belong to me. Before readings and before I meditate, I use relaxation techniques to help deepen my connection with source. Do you uh, constantly second guess yourself? This tip is for you. Asking other people for advice is fine, but when it gets to a point where you're asking your coworkers, your boss, your trusted advisors, your family, your friends, what decision you should make in critical moments, what you're experiencing is a lack of internal intuition. You're essentially going externally to find what best direction to take. So a way to strengthen that internal intuition so that you're going to yourself for advice, because that's who you want to be consulting with most of the time, you'll will want to uh, do a little exercise. So ask yourself, if there were no social implications to my response on this decision, what decision would I make? So if no one would get mad, no one would get happy, no one would silently judge you from afar, what decision would you make? That's the decision you should make. Are you a habitual second guesser? Then this tip is for you. If you go to everybody under the sun for advice except for yourself, then you might have an intuition challenge, which means you have a hard time uh, using your own uh, internal guidance or compass in order to make decisions. So an easy way to strengthen that internal compass and guide is to actually create a future version of yourself in your head. And I call this consulting your wisest self. So imagine yourself in 10 years, how do you act? How do you think? Um, what moves you? How do you communicate? How do you handle conflict or challenges? Then when that is crystal clear in your mind, you ask this future version of you what they would do in this situation. And it will become super clear to you the best course forward.
and do another psychic pro tip. This is a great, a great question. And the answer is yes, there is certain times of the day that are better for doing spiritual work and intuitive work. And it's called Amrit Vila. And it's between four and six in the morning. Many religions all over the world practice this. That's why you see so many morning prayers happening because the veil between spirit, between God and humanity is at its thinnest. The most peaceful and most joyful meditation practice, the best answers I ever got was when I, when I do practice getting up early in the morning and doing my meditation and getting my um, I do readings for myself almost every day also between four and six in the afternoon is the second best time of the day to do this you can meditate and pray any time of the day but this four to six in the morning the Amrit Vela is really special and I encourage you to try that and see if you notice the difference in your own practice Before you do any sort of spiritual, psychic, energetic, magical, metaphysical type of work, you need to be making sure that you do these three things, clearing, grounding, and shielding your energy. Now, if you stick through to the end, I'm gonna show you how to do all three in under 30 seconds. In the meantime, if you're after more psychic development hints and tips, make sure you hit the plus sign. Okay, here we go, closing down your eyes clearing now in your mind's eye say i release all that is not mine and all that no longer serves me to my highest purpose i send it back lovingly to wherever it came from bringing your attention to your feet imagine roots growing through the soles of your feet deep down into the earth's crust and say i declare that my body is now grounded to this earth shielding now imagine being surrounded by a blue egg and say i declare this energetic space mine nothing shall penetrate it without my permission you are ready to connect. A technique you can use to protect your energy. So now we're going to be talking about a light shield, a protection shield that you can use when connecting with your guides that you can just start using every day for empaths, et cetera, et cetera. But this is talking about connecting with your spirit guides. This is a series I'm doing. Um, some people will tell you to go into this with no fear, no protection. I don't agree with that because I feel as though if people are unaware of their own energy and their surrounding energy, that it's important for you to keep your energy, your energetic field protected. By doing so, you can just kind of get comfy and you can use your hands if it's hard to visualize. All you gotta do and say is, I am now surrounded by a divine white light shield. I do not allow any negative beings, energies, or entities into my space. I am fully surrounded and protected by the divine white light. It's the intention behind it. You have to practice this over and over. It's not just a one and done. Feel it. How does that feel for you throughout your body, your energy body? Do you feel warm? Do you feel cozy? These are things that you need to be aware of. Then part two, we're gonna dive into this a little bit more. How to protect your energy. How to protect your energy. Easy. Life, for your store, your shop, really anything. And I hope that you say to actually watch this video because it's important to learn. Because it truly is important to learn. Not everything's just gonna come for you in front of your face out of nowhere. The first thing that I wanna say is that you are a very powerful individual. We as humans give up our power and our energy so often without us even realizing it. I want you to know that giving up your power is not always a bad thing. Remember, polarity, duality. If you don't know about that, go learn it. Sometimes you might not have the power and you might need the power of somebody else to help you, which is okay. Because of polarity and duality, it's important to know both sides of things. Here's a few examples to give you before I explain to kind of get your gears going so you kind of understand better. In my last video, I talked about protecting yourself with your own shop or your store or whatever. But let's think about it on an easier level. Being a medium, I work with spirits, right? Things that most humans can't always physically see. Now, clairvoyance, yeah, but we're not gonna talk about all that. And I wanna be able to use my gift to help you be able to integrate the things that I know in your everyday life so that you can become more aware and receptive to actual energy around you. Not spirits, but I mean like everyday people. Here's the quick first example. Say you're gonna post a picture on Instagram, you are feeling yourself and you know that you look bomb as hell. You post the picture and you probably get 300, 400, 500, whatever plus like. I remember earlier you were feeling bomb as heck you were having a great day you know nothing could shake you but randomly you start feeling a little off maybe you're feeling self-conscious doubtful you know what whatever the case would be but you have to realize how potent energy is somebody has sent you a negative energy an ill intention they could have seen your picture and been like oh, she thinks she looks cute i mean mm. right then and there they have just sent you negative energy and we are very receptive to picking up on that now we never know how it's gonna come through or what, what the effect will be, but we have just felt it. 
Let's get into this. Before you post a picture, before you post a video, before you post whatever it is that you're wanting to post, you're wanting to share with people. In that moment, remember, you're allowing people in energetically. That is what you're doing. You're wanting people to see. And so when you do that, you open your energetic door. I want you to practice this standing in your power and literally step into it. Say anything like that. Anything that kind of gets you hyped, gets you feeling good, because that's amping up your energy. That's really making it grow. It doesn't have to be this word for word. Nobody has access to my energy. Nobody can take from my energy without my permission and nobody can send me any negative harmful or ill intentions or hurtful energy i am divinely fucking protected it's not allowed in my energetic field i do not allow it you can say things with force and intention that's you setting an intention but you have to actually feel it you have to feel your own energy kind of run into your body you're like ooh, ooh, okay i got this i got this that is you stepping into your power that is you taking back your power and nobody can shake you if you're gonna give your energy away if you want to let people in make sure you protect your shit remember once you start feeling your own energy get hyped and ready that's when you know you're doing it you're doing it you're setting the intention your energy is growing your protection A technique you can use as a empath to protect your energy without crystals or candles. So if you're an empath, you're probably very, very tired of feeling dream around others or big crowds. Well, look, you're in the right place because I'm going to give you a technique that doesn't require crystals or candles. Let's do this. Recap before I get into this. Remember what you're picking up on. That is energy. Our energy bodies, our light body, our energetic field extends further out than where our physical body is. So that's why you can pick up on another person's whole life story from across the room. You're connecting with theirs. The issue is that you have not set that energetic boundary. You have not spoken it, um, set that intention so that they can't come into your field. Once you set that intention, that is when the magic happens. And now I'm going to tell you how to do it. Probably gonna get crucified for this TikTok, but here goes. I often get asked, what's the difference between speaking with spirit and speaking with God? Now, the short answer is absolutely nothing at all. What I teach you in speaking with spirit is that it is all one and the same, but religions will have you thinking differently. Religion will have you praising and worshiping something outside of yourself, praying to something outside of yourself, seeking your needs to be met by something outside of yourself, keeping you in the state of powerlessness. You are a powerful being. Everything you need lays within you, everything. And when you learn how to speak with spirit, God, the universe, angels, archangels, beings of light, spirit guides, channeling the super consciousness, your higher self, it's all you. What is psychic channeling? Psychic channeling is when we receive messages from the divine. And whether the divine is spirit, your spirit guides, your beings of light, your angels, your archangels, your higher self, whatever you feel really connected to. So how do we receive messages from spirit? It's when we can see without seeing hear without hearing, know without knowing, feel without feeling, right? It's like sometimes we close our eyes and it's almost like we see this movie scene act out before us. We start to see words come up. It's when we have that feeling in the pit of our stomach that something's not quite right. And sometimes they're just thoughts that come through our mind. We all have the ability to connect. In fact, most of us already do without even knowing it. Have you ever wondered if that thought was from spirit? Ask me in the comments. How to connect with your spirit guide series part one. So you're probably wondering, how do I connect to my spirit guides? How do I see them? How do I feel them? How do I hear them? What is going on? First things first is that this takes time, okay? It takes time because you got to learn about claircognizance, clairsentience, clair, um, audience, clairvoyance, and figure out which gift kind of comes stronger to you. And I'm here to help you do that. You have to be able to tell the difference between positive energy versus negative energy. You have to be able to become present in the moment and aware of your energy and the surrounding energy. These are all things that I got to teach you, but these are all things that come into play. Like talking to your guides is not an easy thing. 
you gotta learn how to do it. And it's hard to do it in just one minute TikTok videos. Like people can give you prompts, but you also have to go beyond TikTok to figure this out. So I'm starting a series. This is just the intro to help you. And if you're ready to follow along, let's go do this. Woo! This is for all my beautiful souls going through their spiritual awakening, wanting to connect with their spirit guides, part two. Before you can communicate with them, you have to be able to know how they're communicating with you. And there are eight different ways that they do that. The first is sensing. Every one of us is clairsentient or clear sensing. It's a feeling that you can feel in your solar plexus. We use this every day, whether you know it or not. For example, you might sense that somebody is going to call you today, and they do. You might sense that something is going to be a bad idea, and then it is. That is that. The other ways are inspirational thoughts, telepathic thought, symbols, meditation, trance state, automatic writing, and also dreams, as well as angel numbers such as these. There's a wide range of them. They might leave you feathers, buttons, flowers, little things that mean some. I even feel their presence. It's very common. Five ways that spirit guides are communicating with you. The question is, are you listening? One is ringing in the ears. So ringing in the right ear generally indicates your spirit guides sending a message that you're not listening to something. So in the moment, next time you hear that ringing, take a really deep breath, close your eyes down and ask the question, what am I not listening to right now? And then just pay attention to your thoughts. Two, signs and symbols that are repeating. So often if you start to see like a butterfly all the time, right? Pay attention to what is going on around you in that moment. It's generally a confirmation or it's almost like bringing your awareness to something that is happening. Number three is flickering lights and electrical malfunctions. This is usually a sign from your spirit guides to bring attention to your energy. It's usually a sign to ground your energy in the moment. Four, synchronicities. One, 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 two, 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 five, 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 seven, seven, seven. Now you can always Google what these numbers mean. But generally, it is confirmation around something that's happening in the moment, similar to the repeating signs and symbols. Number five is bodily sensations. So goosebumps, chills, warm waves moving through the body. For me, when I get goosebumps, it's like, I call them truth bumps. It's like absolute confirmation that what has just been said or felt is 100% truth. That is communications and confirmations from my spirit guides in the moment. Learning to understand, but more so trust in this process is so critical to our journey in speaking with spirit. Would you like me to take you on a guided journey up into the spirit realm? Would you like to learn about the energetics of your body, how to clear, cleanse, and ground your energy, check out the link in my bio for my next live 90 minute masterclass. Sign up now because seats are limited. How do we listen better to our spirit guides and our beings of light and all that channels through us? Well, there's more than one way to listen. One, we can just try and hear what is being said, but two, we can also start to pay attention to the thoughts that are flowing through our mind. Paying attention to the thoughts and then feeling into the sensations that are coming up inside our body and what sort of images are we seeing? What words are we seeing tumble towards us? It's all like little tiny pieces of a jigsaw that all come together. Now, when you and I have a conversation, there's more than one way that we receive that information. The same goes for when we speak with spirit. I hope that helps. Number one lesson when speaking with spirit is to stay in integrity. And the best way to stay in integrity to start with is making sure that you have consent from the person that you're reading for. Sometimes when we first start to have a psychic awakening, we start getting these messages channeled through us and we feel the need and desire to find out who it's for and deliver that message. We are not spirit's personal postman. Okay. And I'll speak more to on why that happens in other videos, but just know this from personal experience, it doesn't end well when we go and dump that in their lap.
Secondly, when we're reading tarot, oracle cards, doing pendulum test, any sort of channeling whatsoever, always ask for permission. Get a yes, please, because you are literally penetrating the energetic space when you connect for them. Stay in integrity, attract high vibrational states, and follow me for more psychic hints and tips. The quickest way to connect to spirit other than setting foundations is tuning in and connecting to ourselves. During my time as an intimacy coach, I recognized that so many people are disconnected from their own bodies. And for me, when I recognized that when I tuned in and connected to my body, I actually felt spirit's message so much louder in the subtlest of forms. And what that meant was that when I was connecting for others, when I projected my energy out to meet theirs halfway from my heart space, I actually could feel where they were in that particular moment before I connected. So when I actually receive messages from spirit, I can make much more sense of what that message is for and how it's meant to help them in this moment right now to their highest purpose. Watch the next video to find out how to connect to your body. My top three ways to connect into your body so you can fully receive spirit's message. Stay tuned for number three because it involves coffee. Number one is simply closing down your eyes. It allows you to go inward. Number two is simply becoming aware of the sensations inside your body. And number three is using your five senses. Mmm feeling something is a clairsentient ability you get the sense that spirit is around you the thoughts flowing through your mind is clairaudient and learning to discern your thought from spirit's thought can be tricky two things you need to know first one is that you always have the power and you always have the choice to simply ask spirit is this my thought or is this channeling from spirit. When I connect for others, sometimes I can't discern without asking the question and I simply ask, is this mine or is this theirs? The first thought is the answer and it's always theirs. The second is the sensation. So for me, I feel a sense of energy flowing through me when I'm channeling down my right side. When they're my own thoughts, the sense that I feel comes down my left. This helps me discern what is mine and what is not. So I want you to close your eyes, sing to the world tonight, and show. Number two way to connect into your body so that you can open it deeper to spirit's message. First, we close our eyes, then we imagine almost like a fax machine going down and up our body, tracking the sensation. We start to speak those sensations out loud. So it might look something like, I feel a twinge in my shoulder. I feel a fire in my belly. I feel a heaviness on my heart. Check out my next video for tip number three. Tip number three is my absolute favorite and it is connecting with our five senses. That's sight, smell, taste, hearing, and feeling. First of all, we're gonna close our eyes down so that we can enhance all of our other senses. Smell, and as I taste, I'm gonna sip and engage three senses, my taste, my feeling, and my sound. Now opening my eyes, all my senses are engaged and I can't be anywhere other than my body. How to get a clear understanding when spirit tries to communicate with you. Make sure you follow for more psychic development hints and tips. So what to do when spirit communicates and you don't understand? Well, just like in the human world, when you don't understand, all you have to do is ask for clarification. Hey spirit, I can sense you behind me. I can hear the ringing in my ears. I know you're trying to tell me something. What is it? What is it that I need to know right now in this moment? It's that easy. And then just pay attention to the thoughts that flow. I find it really easy to grab a journal and start writing. How do you tune in to your spirit guides? You want an easy, simple solution? Just start talking to them. Listen, pay attention to the thoughts that flow as you ask them questions. You will start to sense them. You will feel them around you and you'll soon be able to discern your thoughts from theirs. Practice makes perfect. And perfection is found in the imperfection. So keep going, keep leaning in, keep trusting.
How do you control your psychic gifts? How do you learn how to control them and how do you learn how to turn them on and off? Now I'm about to share with you the most simplest tip and technique that I share with all the beginners learning how to develop their psychic abilities. This way you won't be walking around fully switched on, connecting to everybody's stuff, which becomes really energetically draining. And prior to any meditation, intuitive practice or reading, closing down your eyes, imagine lighting a candle and inviting your spirit guides in and just asking them that any information that flows through is true and correct. Now at the end of the session, imagine blowing that candle out, finding gratitude in your heart and just sharing thanks for their divine support. See how you go. And if you found this tip helpful, follow me for more psychic development hints and tips. Signs that you are clairvoyant. You see movement flashes, twinkles in the corner of your eye. You're a visual learner. Your dreams are incredibly vivid. And sometimes they come true. Daydreaming and imagining, you got that. Often as a child, you were told, get your head out of the clouds. You've seen a spirit in your mind's eye. You can see other people's auras. Easy for you to visualize. You also have a great sense of direction. Mazes, puzzles, and maps are easy for you to read. Keep your eye out for my upcoming video. Ways that you can increase psychic seeing. Claire Sentience, how do you deepen and develop this psychic superpower? What I share with my students in speaking with spirit is the fastest way to tune into Claire Sentience is by tuning in to our own felt sense. And I'm gonna show you by the end of this video, but first, what is the felt sense? Now the felt sense is the embodiment or internal awareness of one's ever-changing sensory, energetic, and emotional landscape within. So to tune in, First, find somewhere safe where you won't be interrupted. Sit or lie down and get comfortable. Next, close your eyes and start tuning in to the sensations that are within your body and start to speak them out loud. Start naming them. As you do this, start to tune into the more subtle energies and where they are coming from. Is it hot, cold, heavy, tingly, sharp? If you feel nothing, name it. Is it empty? Is it hollow? Is it dark? Start with one minute working away to five. And if you found this helpful, follow me for more tips that you are clay cognizant. You've had a strong feeling in your gut that you just couldn't explain, but it was right. You've woken up with an insightful answer to a problem. Mystery movies and novels don't stump you because you are quite the detective. Your friends and family often trust your gut feeling because you are often right. And thoughts often pop into your head, seemingly out of the blue. You tend to analyze things a lot. And quite often you have known something about somebody without any specific reason at all. You know in the comments if this sounds like you want to develop your clairsentience ability, try this. Hi, I'm Christy Treaty. I'm a psychic and soul guide. So if you want more psychic development hints and tips, don't forget to press the plus sign. Now back to business. Next time you go to a family gathering or a party, try sensing the room. When you walk in, ask yourself, what does this energy feel like? And just imagine a fax machine going from the top of your head all the way to the bottom of your toes and then all the way back up again and feel in to any sensations that are running through your body. Where are they? What do they feel like? Are they hot? Are they cold? Are they sharp? Are they fuzzy? Is it light? Is it happy? And as more and more guests arrive, keep checking in with the energy in the room. Does the energy shift? Does it feel lighter or heavier? Maybe you sense drama when a certain couple walk in. As the evening goes on, track the changes. And that is it. You can do this in the workplace as well. You know what she said to me? She said, you're a player, aren't you? And I bet you got hoes. I said, you don't... How do you tap into your psychic senses? My number one tip is engage your five senses. Sight, sound, taste, smell, and touch. Next time you're having a coffee in the morning, have a look at the coffee, then close your eyes. Smell the coffee. Take a sip, hear the slurp. Feel the warmth in your mouth. Taste the coffee on the back of your palate. Tuning in to each and every one of our senses allows us to tune in to the subtleties of each and every one. You see, our psychic senses are just subtle senses that we all have access to. These practices will allow you to tune into them more and more as they come online. Let me know in the comments if this helps. The quickest and easiest way to open up to all of your psychic senses is this. Simply 
close down your eyes. By closing down your eyes, you are actually enhancing every other sense in your body. One by one, simply drop your conscious awareness down into each of your senses. Your eyes, what are you seeing? Your ears, what are you hearing? What thoughts are flowing through? Your knowing, what do you actually feel inside of your body? From there, feel into what the message is. Piece by piece, it's like a jigsaw. And when you can see the full picture, you get the full message. Let me know in the comments what you feel is your most powerful psychic gift. awaken your clairvoyance ability. Stay tuned to the end of this video and I'm going to show you how. If you're ready to develop these psychic abilities, I have three free masterclasses coming up this week. So click the link in my bio to find a time to suit your time zone. Now getting ready, take a deep breath, close down your eyes and in your mind's eye, say, I ask to be connected to my higher self. I ask my higher self to raise my vibration. And I ask my higher self to connect me to my guides, my beings of light, my angels and my archangels. As you feel the connection happening, imagine a white canvas in front of you and imagine painting it black. Now simply ask your guides to write you a message. Ask them to show you the way. Ask them to give you a sign in this moment. And now just wait. Here are a couple of ways that you can develop your intuition. If you're into tarot readings or oracle cards, when you do your reading, instead of looking directly in the guidebook afterwards, use your intuition to decipher the cards and their meanings. If you have crystals or like even dice or something, you can put them in your hand, move them around, and without looking, put one of them into the other hand, and then use your intuition to try to figure out which one is in which hand. Whenever you get a gut feeling, listen to it. Whatever thoughts, whatever information first pops into your mind when you get a question without, you know, thinking about the question, go with that answer. Meditation is a great way to quiet your mind so that it can be open to hearing and receiving the information coming from your intuition. Keeping a dream journal is a really good way too, which is also supported with the supermoon. And try to use your other five senses as often as you can. Observing your surroundings will help you develop your intuition. Do you want to strengthen your intuition? If so, I have an exercise for you to try. Normally this would be an exercise I would do with my intuitive life coaching clients, but today I'm going to do it with you. All you need is a pen, hold it, and say, I am holding a purple penguin. Um, Anastasia, that's not a purple penguin. But that is the point. Your intuition is going to immediately let you know that you are not speaking your truth and that something is not right. So the trick is to figure out how your intuition speaks to you. You're gonna pay attention to the thoughts, the feelings, the sensations that you're having in your body. Keep doing this exercise until you understand if your intuition is speaking to you through an inner voice, maybe a sensation or feeling in the heart, or feelings that you might get tingling on one part of your body or the other. Then get the pen again and say, in this instance, I am holding a black pen. That is correct. And again, pay attention to how your intuition is letting you know when you are speaking your truth and that something is right. Eventually, you're going to be able to tell the difference between the two and use this in everyday life. I've even used this to find parking spots. Like and follow for more tips. Thoughts become things that can continue to take up energetic space. And this might really start to clog up our intuition. So practice clearing the crap. Use tools like meditation, breath work, or going for a walk or run and connect deeper to your intuition. So you wanna create space for your intuition. First thing we gotta do is get you out of here and into the heart. And you can do this by just taking mindful breaths and focusing on the heart space. You want to develop your intuition and heighten your clear senses. I'm going to tell you how to do this in three simple steps. The first step is to observe yourself. We've all had times when intuitive information, downloads or ideas float in. Pay attention to when this is happening. The second step is to practice and I'm going to do a separate video on this one. Make sure to like and follow for more. And the third thing is switch up your routine or take a small risk to spark your intuition. I like to do this when I'm feeling stuck. Do you wanna know a secret? And the fastest way to develop your intuition? It's actually immersion. You have to practice. Just like learning a new language or a new skill, immersion allows you to develop your intuitive toolkit. So you wanna develop your intuition. Four, learn to differentiate between your inner voice and the voices or opinions of others.
intuition is your ability to know something instantaneously. To access your intuition, you must be in a state of receptivity. Here's how we move out of receptivity. The stress of modern day life keeps us in an irregular breathing pattern, which causes us to engage our sympathetic nervous system, also known as fight or flight, and we can't be receptive in a state of fight or flight. To fix that, simply change the way you breathe. An exhale longer than your inhale will activate your vagus nerve, engaging your parasympathetic nervous system, which will allow you to remain in a state of receptivity. The next time you could use some soul level guidance, try this breath practice. Here's a great way to strengthen your intuition and figure out which intuitive ability you have. So a lot of you commented on my last video that you're not sure which Claire ability you have, and here's a way that I have found is really helpful. So we all have signs or repeating signs that come up. For me, it's numbers. So I want you to first just start by paying attention to when you see repeating numbers. That could be things like 111, 222, things like that, but also like 2424 or 1212, things like that. Then instead of going online and looking them up, I want you to just start paying attention and writing down what's going on in your mind or in your surroundings when you see those repeating numbers. So start writing down what's going on in your head or your surroundings when you see these repeating numbers and then start trying to focus on what information you're getting about the number and why it's showing up for you. So some people might start hearing messages about what 1212 means or what 111 means. I close my eyes and I can see visions of things that are coming up as patterns. Some people might see smells or might smell things or see things or feel things. So um, it's a really good practice. Let me know if it works for you. Are you overwhelmed by your psychic abilities? Do you get downloads at unexpected times? Chatter you can't make sense of. Sometimes you can connect, others you can't. Well, my friend, you have some serious boundary issues with spirit. And my suspicion is that that is unfolding in your everyday life. Rather than being at the mercy of your gift, it's time to clean up your boundaries with spirit and start to take control back. Let me know in the comments if this sounds familiar to you. Good evening, is this available? Yes, it is. Please leave me alone, we are sleeping. No more contact in these things. Appreciate you contacting me. genuinely elaborate on this. So we all know that boundaries are really important in our real lives. In fact, I went to therapy for years to learn how to honor my mundane real life boundary. A lot of people don't realize they need to have spiritual boundaries as well. So like apparently the veil has thinned. I've seen a few videos about it, but I haven't noticed anything. And it's because I just, I just say no, 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 no. I don't like to see things with my human eyes. I don't like to hear things with my human ears. I like to see things like behind my eyes when I close my eyes. I like um, clairvoyance in that way. Um, same with clear, clear hearing. But I say no, and it is respected. Nothing can come into my space. Nothing can be perceived by me because I say so. Just literally say out loud, no. We have all the power, this is our realm. 